Yes, you can. A podcast for high achievers. Hi, I'm Tammy North. I'm the owner of the Genuine Driven Women brand of businesses. The goal of this podcast is to help you become the best that you can be. Don't ever doubt the power you have to make the world a better place. Yes, you can make a difference. We're living in unprecedented times. A global coronavirus pandemic has killed millions of people around the world. And countries such as the United States and others have implemented sweeping lockdowns of their communities, bringing thriving economies to their knees. Unemployment is at an all-time high. Surprising natural occurrences such as murder hornets, locusts, double hurricanes, asteroids, massive wildfires, and other such events have people talking about conspiracy theories and biblical end times. Over the summer, there were historic events of mass protests and advocacy sweeping across the country sparked by the George Floyd killings as well as other very similar concerning incidents. All of these drawing attention and support for record numbers of people to actively move toward becoming an anti-racist society. And then we're very near to the presidential elections. The president of the United States, President Trump, was recently diagnosed with coronavirus himself, and then yet he is back at the White House now and seemingly fine. But the Joint Chiefs of Staff and others, you know, it, the coronavirus is, is going through the president's cabinet, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and it, it's pretty scary time from that regard. All of this going on, it's remarkable. There has never been another year like it since I've been alive. And I have to tell you, right now, the earth feels alive to me in a way that it never has in my entire lifetime. If you think about other historical times in the past, times after which the world was a different place afterwards, such as the Civil War, the Dust Bowl, the Great Depression, World War II, the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s, and September 11th, 2001, 9-11. I believe that here we are in October 2020, and I am certain the entire year of 2020 will be added to that list. And anybody who is old enough to remember it, anybody who's probably over the age of four years old, will never forget this year. Have you ever read a book or watched a movie or a documentary of any of these extraordinary times that I just talked about? A lot of these events were marked by a Time Magazine photo. These covers so often perfectly capture the events of the time. Think of a time like, for instance, during the Dust Bowl, where there may have been a picture of a mother's face as she just sits staring blankly with her children nearby, her momentary hopelessness captured in the complexity of her eyes, in the lines of her face, the way she holds her mouth, trembling yet strong. As you study the photo, you see her resolve. This situation will not be the last act of her story. Still, there she sits wondering how she will go on and what life will be like for her children in the future. Sitting here in 2020, we know so far that human life did and does move forward after all of these large-scale events. It's agonizingly slow. Many lives are lost in the process, but humanity does move on. Lessons are learned. Governments pass laws. Policies are put into place, and we are never the same. This is the way of humankind in general. The thing is that humankind is made of millions and billions of individual people, each with their own story, each with their own hope and desires. In 2020, you are but one life in this sea of humanity. You're trying to figure out who you are, thinking about what has shifted in your dreams and plans over the past year. Think of the COVID-19 trackers, like the Johns Hopkins University tracker. It compiles data from around the world and populates little red dots on the globe for people to search and filter. At first, it was pretty interesting, but eventually it just becomes a statistic generator. It's too hard to process. There's no human connection. It's the equivalent to a zoomed out globe showing the lights and the electricity on the dark side of the earth. So many dots that it has little meaning or context. All of those dots, they're basically a catalyst of anxiety with the cold, heartless data snowballing into something too big to comprehend and too scary to ignore. And then the news, the media shows it incessantly. Back at the beginning of 2020 in January, I recorded a podcast episode titled Desire Design your dream decade. I often think back to that episode. I remember recording it because I created a worksheet at that time for you to write down your goals, to capture your thoughts, and then to translate them into active tasks that you could work into your weekly and daily plans. And then simultaneously, the reason I created that exact worksheet for you is because that is how I live my life. I write down my goals. I change them into tasks, and then I write them into my actual planner. And that's how I move forward. That's how I accomplish my dreams. 
It's more complex than that, but that's essentially the ABCs. So when I think back to recording that podcast, and I was pretty excited about it because it's the beginning of the new year, and I wanted you to be excited about it too. And I wanted to help you make this year the year that your dreams came true. But little could I have known how much would actually happen in this year. But still, this year is only the first of the decade. And that episode was titled Design Your Dream Decade. This one year, the first year of this decade. Yeah, there'll probably never be another year quite like it. But think about a year like this, a year with all of this tragedy, with so many unbelievable things occurring, but yet there's been a shift in our humanity. And I know the media wants you to believe that we're divided and that we are on two ends of the spectrum. It doesn't matter. Are you racist or anti-racist? Are you black or white? Are you Democrat or Republican? Are you rich or poor? So much of what is being shown in in the media is to drive division and to keep us apart. But what we really are are when you get down to each single individual one of us, we're a human. We're we're somebody with a heart and a soul. And that red dot over there, that person is a human with a heart and a soul. And if we spend more time connecting and communicating, we have an opportunity to work together to make the world the place that we wish it was. So what if you looked at 2020 and you decided that this was the year you are going to do something to make the world a better place in your own way? This is the year that you do something meaningful something important for the world. I know you've heard me talk about it in previous episodes. I often talk about how you are not dreaming big enough and how I want you to reach for something beyond what seems within your grasp. I want you to have a larger vision for your life and for the world. Think back to December 2019 when you were there celebrating. You made some resolution that night that you were going to change something. You were going to improve yourself in some way. There you were celebrating with your friends and family, probably one of the last big parties you were at, clinking champagne champagne glasses, singing, hugging. What was your resolution that night? What about when you listened to that Design the Dream Decade podcast? Did you actually go get the download? Did you actually write out your goals? If you did, what did you imagine for yourself? That whole podcast was about thinking about the year 2030. What did you imagine for yourself and your life and what it would be like in the year 2030? Did you take the time to translate that vision into the milestones you need to meet in the next five years? Intangible, smart goals for this year? Even if all you did was think about your goal as you sipped your glass of champagne, or maybe you you jotted something down on the back of the napkin so you wouldn't forget it. Just take a minute right now and think about who you were on New Year's Day 2020. Think about what you wanted most on that day. Then think of everything that has transpired. Do you have the same goal now? I know your goal might have changed or shifted based on the impact of the economy, or maybe you got laid off or furloughed. Maybe somebody close to you died from coronavirus or from any of these other number of things that have been occurring. Maybe you're black and you feel greatly inspired to keep this movement going. And that now in a way that you in 2020, you didn't think was possible, but right now you feel it's possible for things to actually change. Maybe you are somebody who didn't lose your job, but your entire workforce has been teleworking. And you realize even though you never expected they would be good teleworkers, they are. And you're realizing, wow, we can have a much better work-life balance. Just think of the opportunities we have now that so much of the world has figured out how to telework. I'm not saying we should telework all the time, but I am saying it's a thing. And I think a lot of people have learned to embrace it, which should improve opportunities for families over the long run. So here we are right now. It's October, 2020. And it feels feels like the entire world is a different place. It's only been, you know, nine or 10 months. With everything that's gone on and with all of the people struggling and suffering, is it even right for you to dream? Is it even okay for you to have a big dream for yourself? Is it selfish? I don't think so. What do you want? Is there a chance that you can be part of the change and make the world a better place? Is your city and state opening back up? How are people treating each other when you see them in the grocery stores? I can tell you that for me, this year I had some of the highest highs and I learned a lot about myself over the last nine months. I made a very solid decision that I was going to come out of 2020 stronger than ever and I was going to be determined to make the world a better place. This year has not always been easy, not even for me, but my drive has always been to make the world a better place since I was very young. I felt a very strong need to do that. And today I am crystal clear on my purpose and I will not back down. I will not stop. This year has been hard. It's been hard for so many, but that is the reason. Just because I know there's so many people struggling and so many people who want more and so many people who are genuine and want connection and want to love the others on the other side of the issue, whatever the issue is, that we don't have to remain divided. We have an opportunity 
opportunity to collaborate, to bring each other closer and to work together to make the world a better place. And that is what drives me. I vividly remember 9-11. I had just been commissioned as a naval officer at that time. And I was in Pensacola, Florida. And I was at school that morning. We were doing some exercises outside. And then somebody had their car door open. And we went to listen. Like they had just parked. And they maybe went to get a drink of water or something. But they had their car radio on. And they said, hey, everybody, come over here. So we all ran over. And we stood around this one officer's car and just listened. And that was how we heard the news that the first first plane had struck one of the towers. And then shortly after we heard that there had been another one. And then later on that day, when we broke for lunch, we went to eat lunch and we're sitting there and the TVs were on in the restaurant we were in. And that's when we were just eating. I had a taco in my hand and I looked up at the TV and I was about to take the first bite of my lunch. And right when I looked up, the first building fell and I just set my taco back down. I remember I never ate anything that day. And we all just sat there. None of us even spoke. My daughter at the time was in kindergarten and what ended up happening after that was pretty surprising. I remember they went to essential people only on the basis for a while. So I was required to stay home with my daughter for a period of time. I don't remember exactly how long, but that's the closest thing before now that's ever come to coronavirus where you just had to stay home and wait and see what happened. And it was really too much alone time. I was a single mom. So I was by myself at that time with my daughter. And I do remember this, something compelled me to go to Michael's. It was a craft store and I went and bought a bunch of blue and red ribbon. And then we made ribbons to wear and ribbons for our antennas of our car and other people were doing it as well. And I was in the Michael's that day with my five-year-old because I was trying to find a project we could do that I could help her understand and make her feel like we were doing something that was patriotic. So in the Michael's, everybody was talking to each other. There was all of these ladies with their kids and there was probably like, I don't know, 50 of us waiting in line and everybody was being so nice to each other. Everybody was hugging everybody was talking. We, I didn't know any of these people, but we were all just so thankful to be alive. We were so thankful to be there and we were all afraid, but we were all unified in that moment. That feeling, the few days right after that, I will never forget how that felt. And it's kind of hard. I mean, the way I, when I say it out loud right now, it might not sound how profound that it was, but it was remarkable. Think about when you go to the grocery store right now and nobody even talks to each other. That day, everybody was a family and we all cared about each other. There's no reason the world can't be that way every day. I know it's kind of unrealistic. A couple months ago, I heard a poem. It was a video actually of a man re reciting a poem that he had written. This poem is called The Great Realization and it's by Tom Robert. I'll put the video, there's a YouTube video that I saw. I'll put that into the show notes so you can go check it out. You have to watch it if you haven't. You might've already seen it because I think it went viral, but I thought it was beautiful and it really gets to the heart of what I'm talking about today. But essentially this poem is about a father reading a story to his son and they're way in the future. And at the beginning of this poem, the boy is talking to his dad and he's like, dad, tell me the one again. Tell me the one about the virus again. Then I'll go to bed. But my boy, you're growing weary. Sleepy thoughts about your head. Please, that one's my favorite. I promise just once more. Okay, snuggle down, my boy, though. I know, you know full well. This story starts before then in a world I once would dwell. It was a world of waste and wonder, of poverty and plenty, back before we understood why hindsight's twenty twenty. That's just the opening stanza. I think you should go watch the video. It's, uh, it, I think it'll give you chills, but also I think it'll inspire you for what could be. And after you watch it, I want you to think about who you want to be and the life you can create for yourself. Here we are. We're only now about two and a half months until 2021. And it's going to be the end of this wild year. And for the next couple months and at the beginning of 2021, I'm going to be taking you on a journey on this podcast to get you ready to jump toward your biggest goals right away. Maybe even sooner. If you're ready to get on with it and you don't want to wait for New Year's Eve to make your plan. Perfect. Think about all the months since the pandemic began. Think about how much has transpired. Think about the earliest days when we were not certain how bad things would get. Did you think even for a moment, is this how the apocalypse starts? Maybe it wouldn't have been the virus, but maybe the second and third order effects that got you thinking of this, the masses of humans reacting to their own fear and desire to survive that would cause it. Did you think about that even for a moment when you did, when you were afraid and thought, I don't know, this might be the apocalypse. What mattered to you most when you thought about that? What made your heart ache? What was your deepest fear in those moments? What did you fear the most that you would lose if society collapsed? 
I'm not asking you this right now because I want you to become an extreme prepper. Although I wouldn't judge you if this year moved you toward that end of the spectrum. The reason I'm asking you this is because in those moments when you fear loss and dread the unknown change, you know, the actual things you're afraid of. If the world collapsed, if everybody ran on toilet paper and then somebody started shooting each other so they could get the hand sanitizer or whatever was going to happen. I don't know. What were you most afraid to lose when you had those moments of fear? What really got in your brain and gave you the chills? Take a moment and reflect on those darkest thoughts you had at the beginning of the pandemic. The businesses were closing. The schools were shutting down. None of this has ever happened before. The, there was runs on soap, toilet paper shortages. What did your mind fear more than anything? Just take a few minutes and really focus on that. And then write down a few of your thoughts. If you have the time, I recommend you actually sit there and journal about it for 10 to 15 minutes or however long you want. But then review your thoughts and circle the things that you did not want to lose. For me, I kept having flashes of actually having to protect my children. Also, my husband has asthma and I was very afraid of him getting COVID and then not being able to fight it off. And he's so strong and so amazing, but I feel like his asthma is his Achilles heel. Now I just kept thinking of him not being able to breathe and it terrified me. Those two thoughts, having to protect my children from whatever craziness occurred and then my husband not being able to breathe. Those two thoughts were the scariest thing of all for me. Right now, my husband and I both work for the Navy, so I wasn't very afraid of us losing our jobs. But if things got bad enough, I guess it could happen. But still, I was I was one of the lucky few who didn't have to worry about that too much. So I didn't have that kind of stress. So for me, it was mainly health related or um, if, if society actually collapsed, I had to protect my kids. Those were my two main stresses, but you know, I know so many of you had possibly that on top of many other stresses, financial and otherwise. Wait, so when you hear what I was just telling you about my thoughts, what did you hear? I think you heard that if you were listening, you probably heard that my kids and my husband are the most important part of my life. Between my husband and myself, we also have eight living parents, parents and step parents. We know we are super blessed that that's our reality, that we right now have all of our parents and all of our step parents alive. But given the age range of the hardest hit COVID victims, we were very worried that our parents would be impacted. And luckily so far, this has also not been the case, but that's what we thought about. So those are our most important things, our kids, our parents, and for me, my husband. So think about your concerns, the things you worried about. The things that you were most afraid of losing are the things that you care about the absolute most in your life. So now think about that. Okay, so there's a line. We know what is most important to you. But now go back to the goals you actually wrote down in January 2020. How many of your goals were related to any of these people or other high priority thoughts that you remember from your darkest days of the pandemic? I heard from a lot of you who subscribed to my 30 day executive presence from home email challenge that you had actually lost your jobs due to COVID shutdowns and you were working through the 30 day challenge to find a new job, which is actually one of the best outcomes of that challenge. And for those people, I cannot imagine the thoughts you were having at that time. If you were laid off on top of all the other fears sweeping the country. So here we are, 2021 is going to be here before you know it and you have a fresh chance. This last year may have been the absolute worst year of your life. It's possible that you discovered anxieties that you never knew you had. And maybe it was simply a wash. You feel like the world has just been on pause for you. I mean, it's also possible this year was actually good for you. And if so, take a moment just to be grateful for all the blessings in your life. But either way, 2021 is coming and it's going to bring fresh opportunities and dreams. We will never forget this last year. That would be impossible. The world is forever changed in so many ways. But I choose to believe that the change will largely be for the better. The anti-racism movements, the way we will no longer take things for granted, at least not for a while, the way the workforce changed so industries who never in a million years would have embraced teleworking have figured it out. These changes will make the work-life balance equation a lot easier to manage. <laughs> People even learn to wash their hands. <laughs> what else do you think will be better? What have you learned? What do you think society has learned? And don't say nothing because we've all learned something. I want you to start thinking about 2021 right now. You don't have to do anything yet. I'm not going to give you a worksheet this week. Just start dreaming about your life. Think about the next year and dream about the world you want to help create. What do you want? What do you see when you dream as big as you possibly can? 
Take the next few weeks and dream big. Listen to music. Imagine thinking about how you can create a big positive impact for you, your family, and your community. And write down everything you think and see when you imagine this incredible future. Then keep your ideas in a safe place because we're going to use them. I don't want you to spend one more minute living a life that is not aligned with your purpose. I want you to make sure the people you care about receive the quality place in your life that they deserve. I want you to feel like you're making the impact in life that you've always wanted to create. This is going to be the year. This is the year we finally learn the lessons. This is the year we finally love each other in spite of our differences. And this is the year we take massive action to make our purpose-driven dreams a reality. Get ready. This is going to be good. You can connect with us on Facebook at Genuine Driven Women. Or to learn more about what we offer, check out GenuineDrivenWomen.com.